Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing a after action report style video on a class that my friend Eric and I just took, which was the intro to long range class hosted by the McCluskey Arms Company, who was hosting the Task Collective, who then in turn hosted Sidewinder Concepts, um, kind of a roundabout way of getting that in. Um, but basically it was a class that was geared towards people not familiar with the long range precision shooting and getting them... Um, a lot more comfortable with it, teaching you the basics that you need to know to be able to basically hit at a thousand yards uh, was kind of the goal of the class. Would you yeah, agree? Definitely. Um, so as far as my background on long range shooting, you guys, if you've been following the channel, know it's not really my forte. It's not something I've done a ton of. Anything beyond like 400 yards, any of the hits that I've made have been someone else doing the work of figuring out what the scope needs to be at. And then I just have to not suck at pulling the trigger. Um, what, what was your experience with long range shooting going into this? Sure. So, um, I had about two years of just hobby, um, kind of teach yourself long range. Um, when I lived in Colorado, we had really nice long ranges and I had tinkered out to a thousand, a decent amount. Um, but it was always just, um, basically Googling how to <laughs> hit each target and taking my time and shooting a lot of yeah. ammo to hit each target. Um, we also shot a, a lot faster bullets, so we didn't have to worry about as much about windage and elevation. And a lot of times, if there was wind, we just packed up and went home. <laughs> <laughs> right, fair weather shooters. Yeah, exactly. And it was it was nice to do that, but I didn't have a ton of um, I had a ton of compartmentalized knowledge, like about um, you know ballistics and how scopes work and how to set up a rifle, but none of it really clicked together. Sure. And, and for what it's worth, uh, obviously, so Eric McCluskey of the McCluskey Arms Company, who hosted the class, um, he was also a student in the class. We'll talk a little bit more about their relationship and how to find out about their hosting at the end of the video, um, but just to put some context in there right off the bat. Um, so what were your expectations? I, or I guess I should say, what, what would you say your comfortability was with your own skill level going into this class? Sure. So I had a really nice setup that I was uh, borrowing the rifle and I have collected some nice um, optics and stuff. So I was expecting to be able to put hits um, on target um, and I would be comfortable doing that before the class. But the uh, um, dialing and getting first shot hits on target was something that um, I was expecting out of the class and we definitely got out of the class. Yeah. And, uh, and I would agree with that. Um, and. I was kind of the same way. My, my goal was just become a lot more familiar with it, learn how to actually dial, how to basically make a dope sheet instead of just like launching rounds and uh, am I even in the ballpark, like how to actually get in the ballpark and then actually establish what your you know dope needs to be and all that. Um, and my ex expectation was, it was a two day class. If, I'm, if I hit a thousand yards by the end of day two, I'll consider that a success. And um, Spoiler alert, we, we, the instructor had all of us hitting at a thousand before the end of the first day. Yeah, um, and consistently. Consistently. Yeah, yeah and, and so um, just to kind of, obviously I'm not going to go into too many details in the class. If you want to know more, you really need to take the class. This is one of those things where you need hands-on time mm -hmm. doing it, getting the reps in yourself to actually be able to get the stuff out of it. Um, but the whole like first half of the first day was sit down lecture, um, totally what I expected. However, what I didn't expect, and you can say, you know give your two cents on this, was it was a lot of concepts and theory, but like no math, no equations. It was he the instructor who for for what it's worth, actually he might be out now. I think he said he was getting out this month. Um, was active duty sniper in the army. He's been doing this thing for a long time, um, and he. Not only knows how to do it, but is very good, very good at teaching it and teaching it in a very simple, easy to understand way. Now, obviously this is an intro class. Mm -hmm. Maybe it gets a little bit more technical and complicated in the later classes. Um, but I was really surprised at how little math and equations was going into it. A lot of it was, let's just figure out the basics, fit the rifle to you, understand the general concepts, and then let's start shooting. What, what was yeah. your take on that? It's really nice, especially in an intro class, um, to come to it with an instructor with the mindset of, you have a computer in your pocket, use it. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's scary, especially for 
well, for me, when I go out to the range, I can do the math, but I really just want to, and I don't want to start with the math, you know? Yeah. And um, it's nice to just know that you have a good quality computer, ballistics computer in your pocket, and know how to give it good information and get good results. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I think the coming to it with that attitude, where I was actually expecting to have to do all the math, yeah. which I think, again, um, in a more advanced class, that might be something that is welcome, but it's really nice to be able to go and you've got a ballistics calculator, use it. Yeah, and it was really good for building confidence. And I know there's gonna be a lot of critics out there who are like, ah, you're using a computer, you're cheating. Again, this is an intro level class. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is just getting us through the fundamentals and again, building confidence. Because we did the lecture, we made sure everyone's rifles were fit to them. Sometimes it took some jerry-rigging to make it work. Uh, you had some stuff taped onto your gun to make it work. <laughs> um, but everyone got squared away there. And then we started shooting and when we started, Everyone ran their gun through a chronograph just to make sure we knew exactly what velocities we were dealing with so we could program the calculators properly. And then pretty much immediately, the instructor took us out to 1,000 mm -hmm. and got everyone to hit at 1,000 surprisingly quickly in, in my yeah. estimation from what I was expecting going into the class, um, which was just a huge confidence boost going in, like finishing out day one, going into day two. Mm -hmm. what, what was your take on that? I mean, it was pretty impressive. Um, so it's one of those things where the first day he fed us a lot of information and guided us to a thousand pretty quickly, um, but was definitely not giving us, you know, every step of the way. He was a very good teacher. And um, I was very impressed. The first drill we did on the second day was cold bore, two shots at two 700. minutes. Yeah, two, you had two minutes to fire two shots. Mm -hmm. To 700 hit at, 100, at 700 yards. Yeah, and... Um, With no coaching or anything mm -hmm. like that. That was definitely something that I would not have been confident doing before the class. Yeah, I wouldn't have even known where to and start. And honestly, when I laid down at my gun to do that, I was like, there's no way this is happening. Mm -hmm. um, but I tried to do all the steps, as he explained in the first day, mm -hmm. and um, try and took my time, and sure enough... A missed on the first shot and hit on the second shot, a good hit. Mm -hmm. um, and the first shot was a miss because of a bad wind call on mm -hmm. my part. Um, and that's something that comes with experience. Um, and a lot of people, I think even you got it, two hits, mm -hmm. two good hits, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, to be able to go from a bunch of people who don't have confidence to even shoot their gun uh, out to a thousand yards to being able to do it rapidly and actually know what you're doing the first shots of the second day, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, it, it, it was amazing, and, and it's hard to articulate this. This is probably gonna sound weird, but for anyone in the class, I'm sure they would agree with me. It almost feels like we didn't learn a lot mm. because there wasn't so much complicated stuff and the instructor broke things down in a very simple way. Yeah. But we all went, and your perception of the class is probably the same as mine, but feel free to jump in here. Everyone in the class was new to shooting long distance precision rifle. There was a lot of really nice setups, but a lot of people, myself included, who didn't really know how to use that setup. Um, and everyone had pretty low confidence. I, I was kind of talking to people before the class saying what, what they were expecting. And everyone learned a ton and felt way more confident mm -hmm. by the end of the class. Uh, like, like you said, the beginning of day two, cold bore shots at 700 yards with no coaching or anything like that, having to spot for yourself, dial for yourself. Um, if, if he had done that first thing on day one, I, again, I wouldn't have any idea where to shot. I would have probably hit a couple hundred yards <laughs> close yeah. or a couple hundred yards far. Um, but it was just, the information was delivered in such a simple way, you almost didn't feel like you were getting at anything out of it. But again, we'll kind of jump into the conclusions here. Yeah. I feel very confident getting first round hits, even out to like seven, eight hundred yards mm -hmm. now, um, and within a couple shots out to a thousand, assuming wind's not ridiculous. Yeah. I think it was amazing to me. My biggest takeaway from that class, from a kind of a explaining it to someone else kind of type of view, is we had people in that class who were, had never shot more than a couple hundred yards mm -hmm. on borrowed guns that were way suboptimal for what they needed 
and by the end of the class, even realistically by the beginning of day two, they were making good informed hits mm -hmm. for shots and doing it correctly. Um, and a lot of that stuff was, um, seemed like you said, we didn't learn that much, but it's a lot of like, um, putting a, a good example for me is taught you your exact stance, uh, maybe not stance, but position to shoot from, um, which just had a cascade effect of like, I understand how to lay prone, mm -hmm. but getting it just perfect right. allowed you to manage recoil. And then that allows you to stay in your scope and mm -hmm. that allows you to spot your own shots and be comfortable in your yeah. position and be comfortable in your position for a long period of time. And that's something that you can't get in a lot of other situations. And you would never think that just that, you know, half an inch over to one side or, you know, just slightly different positioning would help you that much. But just something that small allows and, you know, a lot of small things. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of downstream effects. A lot of downstream effects, and it was amazing. I really saw it that second day, and it was one of those classes where you really, nothing was, like, earth-shatteringly new, mm -hmm. but everything was very much, you know, little stuff that just had a great end result. Mm -hmm. And um, I really think that, for me, that class is not at all what I was expecting, right. but way better than I could have asked for. Yeah, I 100% agree. If, if you'd have asked me what the course was gonna look like going in, I would have described a very different class, mm -hmm. but I also would have described a class where I didn't learn nearly as much mm -hmm. or gain nearly as much confidence in my system yeah. as, as I did by the at the end of it. Yeah, and I think it's great to have a class that's an intro to long range, that at the end of it you have people talking about how great the hits were and how you know awesome you know, just these little technique things were versus, yeah, I can do the math on how to figure <laughs> out my exact trajectory, right. um, which I think it it's just a much better experience. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, again, I wasn't inundated with math equations. The, literally, the only math we did the entire time was figuring out where our transonic window was mm -hmm. based on our, our, you know, atmospherics. That was the, that was it for math. Everything else, we let the computer do the hard work but again, that just gave us that huge confidence boost when we're actually hitting. And you know, the computer wasn't 100% right because there's always little variables that are hard to account for. But when it wasn't right, we were at least in the ballpark enough to figure out what our holds actually were. And then we were able to make a very effective dope book. Mm -hmm. And there were some, like, I, I know you said there wasn't anything like earth shattering that we learned, but there were some very basic principles that I learned that at least with my rifle, I can, very confidently, like I said, mm -hmm. get first round hits out to seven, eight hundred yards just because of very basic principles that we were able to get in the class. And that's, again, not anything yeah. I would have ever anticipated um, with it. And yeah. I also want to mention, too, before we uh, get too far away from the first day, I've taken a lot of training classes. I've taken a lot of multi-day training classes. This was the first time I've seen people just like voluntarily hang out on the range, helping each other, shooting, practicing some of the things we learned. And we were in a kind of a unique position where it was a private range and we kind of had free reign of the place. Um, but, you know, the class, I think, ended around like 4.30, 5 o'clock. Most of the people were there until like 7 o'clock, just mm -hmm. like, you know, shooting. And it was the kind of class where you could kind of shoot as much or as little as you wanted. Um, and I've never seen people having as much fun and just like having, enjoying spending that much money per round <laughs> fired yeah. down range and just like having that community of like learning and growing together. It was really, it was a really different experience. It was kind of cool. Definitely. I think um, one of my personal biggest takeaways from it was, like I said at the beginning, I have a lot of compartmentalized knowledge and I think a lot of people in the gun world have heard of things uh, and, and have a, a knowledge of what they are, but not in an applied sense. And what this class allowed me to do is take things that I've heard and all of the, I guess, all of the breakthroughs that I had were all things that I knew existed. Mm -hmm. I just had no idea why they were important or um, I was, it was not explained correctly mm -hmm. as to why it was important. Parallax is a big one mm -hmm. for me that I took away that I knew exactly what it was, right. but I had no application side of it. Um, or like why 5.56 five, maximum effective range according to the military 600 yards. I just thought it was kind of some arbitrary number of like, mm -hmm. oh, a guy can shoot accurately at that far, but 
there's an actual mathematical yeah. reason for the maximum effective ranges mm -hmm. as, as purported by the military. Yeah, and this class did an amazing job of tying together all of that knowledge into an application mm -hmm. standpoint. And I mean, you take like a lot of people, I think you brought up uh, before Mills and MOA. Mm -hmm. I've been team MOA my whole <laughs> life. Um, and you know, whether I stay MOA or not, I completely understand why people pref prefer Mills now. Right. Yeah, I, I just thought it was like a, eh, mm -hmm. just pick one. It's Remington 870 versus Mossberg 500. Mm -hmm. Just pick one and be happy with it. And it is kind of that way, but now having a better understanding of yeah. what that practical considerations are with one or the other. Mm -hmm. um, and when we're talking about gear, this was an interesting thing that on the surface of it seemed weird, but actually I think I liked a lot better. And again, as someone who's taken a lot of classes in rifle classes, handgun classes, medical classes, any of those classes, one of the first things you cover before ever really shooting is gear, gear setup, gear placement and all that. And yes, we did have everyone fit the guns to themselves as one of the first things in the class. But we didn't actually cover things like scope options out there, bipod options, rear bag options, stocks, all that kind of stuff. We didn't cover that until the very end. That was the very last thing we did in the class, which seems weird. However, I really appreciated it after considering it in hindsight because if he had gone over bipods, mm -hmm. the first thing in the class, and he had said that he doesn't like Magpul bipods. Mm -hmm. Well, then anyone running a Magpul bipod or like the squeeze bag I was using, I learned was very suboptimal. And if he had told me how bad my rear squeeze bag was at the beginning of class, that's going to be in the back of my head the entire class. And anytime I throw a shot, anytime I miss a target, my brain is going to be like, it was that rear bag. It was that Magpul <laughs> bipod. It wasn't anything I was doing. And mm -hmm. it took away the possible excuses I had and just made me focus on the equipment I had, how to use it to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. And I have since then changed a lot. Like, so this is the rifle I took in the class and it doesn't quite look like the rifle I took through the class. The big <laughs> yeah. thing is changing the, the stock on it because I was able to learn through practical application what worked in my setup and, or what worked with my setup and what most importantly didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a new chassis now, I've got a much better squeeze bag on the way. Um, but again, I was still able to get thousand yard hits pretty efficiently and pretty easily in that class um, with a suboptimal setup. Yeah, I guess I have a couple of things to touch on as far as the gear goes. Um, we had people in that class ranging all the way from a borrowed was Tika it a 308, 308 yeah. with a, with a MOA dial or no yeah, MOA, an MOA dial, dial and an but, MRAD. but mil yeah. reticle. Mm -hmm. um, so something like that that the student was completely um, new to, because um, it was not their gun, um, to uh, Barrett MRAD with a Schmitten Bender on it. Yeah. Um, with the, what's the reticle that he was the using? The Tremor. The Tremor reticle, which, you know, is supposed to be amazing. And um, I think in reality, the person who took the most away from that was probably the person with the Tika, mm -hmm. because they saved so much money in yeah. not buying the wrong mm -hmm. stuff and buying stuff that they know is going to work for them. Um, now, obviously, the MRAD performed great and the Schmidt and Bender was awesome, and yeah. the you know that was really cool. But um, I personally would recommend to anybody who wants to take this class, especially if you haven't already bought a gun and all the accessories, borrow it. Yeah, you know uh, you can even rent it from I think Sidewinder and mm -hmm. um, Task Collective. Task Collective rent rifles. I think you would save an astronomic amount of money. Yeah, and it, it's weird because it's something I tell people all the time working at a gun store, if they're taking the concealed handgun license class and they're trying to buy a gun for the class, I always tell them, rent a gun from the instructor, mm -hmm. figure out what you like and what you don't like, and then buy a gun. Mm -hmm. And my brain never really applied that to long range <laughs> shooting for some reason, but it makes so much sense. And mm -hmm. by the end of it, that person had so much more information to draw from and it's going to make way better investment choices yeah. than any of the rest of us would have made. Um, and I do want to mention too, the ammo was something I found very fascinating in the class <laughs> yeah. because the guy running a Barrett MRAD was running regular full, so it was all 6.5 Creedmoor and 308. That's all the calibers in the class. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy running the Barrett MRAD was shooting just full metal jacket 6.5 Creedmoor, not particularly yeah. high BC stuff. 
because that's what was available and he could get for the class in quantity. You were running just ball, yeah, M80 was, ball basically. Yeah. There was a couple people running basically M80 ball 308. Yeah. But you know what? You guys were still able to make consistent hits out to several hundred yards. And it's actually, it was interesting. I wouldn't recommend taking the class yeah, with ball ammo. It's not it's, a recommendation. If you're trying to get your money's worth out of a class, you should shoot match. Yeah. Um, not, it doesn't have to be super high end, but some form of match. Um, but it's the first time I've ever actually seen a difference between ball and match. Mm -hmm. Because I, I was confident enough that I was shooting correctly. Yep. And in some instances, a shot would just go somewhere random. Yeah. And I would tell my spotter, that's the ammo. I know it's the yeah. ammo for sure. That was a good trigger pull, um, good sight picture. Yep. And it's the first time I've ever felt confident. And up until then, I've always said, oh, no, that was probably me. Let me. Yeah. Um, so now I think I have an appreciation of what match ammo yeah. is. Um, yeah. And it was pretty cool to be able to do that. I mean, like I said, I would not recommend taking it with ball ammo. Um, but it was interesting seeing yeah. the difference in ammo. Yeah, absolutely. And again, it goes into that maximum effective range, basically where the bullet goes transonic. Because mm -hmm. the guy with the Barrett MRAD, I was spotting for him when he was getting his zero group and he was literally stacking rounds on top of each other at 100 yards. And between zero and 800 yards, there was no question he was gonna hit the target. Mm -hmm. But a little bit at 900 and especially at 1,000, that's where things got a little bit less consistent. And mm -hmm. it wasn't because the shooter wasn't doing it properly, but that bullet is just is. starting to go transonic basically and then everything goes out the window. Yeah. Uh, again, something easier to understand if once you've taken the <laughs> class or have a background in long range shooting. Yeah, and um, my spotter, um, we kind of paired up for most of the class and um, he was also shooting um, a 308. He was shooting good quality match ammo and, it was, and he was in a very similar gun setup, very similar history and skill. Um, and it was very interesting to see the match ammo that was really where it shot shown was um in the transonic area yeah um which yeah. i wouldn't have any idea what that was before the class so exactly <laughs> um let's see um is there any other like takeaways or things that you want to mention about the class and i always forget how cool introductory stuff is mm -hmm. i mean i think it's interesting how and it kind of applies to everywhere, but when you go back to basics, you really, and obviously this is the first time I've been at basics, right. but the basics are really fun, yeah. and it's really where you get the most stuff. Um, and I think that that class, if you were an experienced um, shooter, maybe not a you know competition long range mm -hmm. guy, but if you're an experienced shooter, you could take that class, and I think you would have had just much fun if you, this was the first time pulling the trigger on a bolt gun. Yeah. and. And I think it's also worth mentioning, if you're considering this class, if you don't have a lot of experience shooting rifles, this probably isn't the class for you. I think you would get a lot more out of it if you've really got good fundamentals of trigger press and all that kind of stuff. Um, but for anyone that has pretty decent competency with shooting in general, um, th this is the class where I saw the most progression in my skills. I've taken a lot of classes, like I said, and I can definitely track progression of skills over time. But my skill level and confidence, again, I, I know we keep harping on it, but it really, I don't think, can be overstated, progressed more in this class than I think any other two-day mm -hmm. class I've ever taken. Yeah, and I'm pretty new to the training game, um, at least in firearms, and I was not expecting to learn as much from this class as I did. And what I was expecting to learn was things like math equations and right. stuff, which I'm really glad that that's not what I took away from it. Yeah, 100%. Now again, that's stuff that I would like to learn mm -hmm. eventually. Yeah. And I'm sure that's because there's this is a three kind of course meal. Mm -hmm. We did the introductory, there's going to be a level two class and then a level three class later this summer. Um, and I'm sure we're going to get into the analog stuff later, mm -hmm. but letting the supercomputer in my pocket be a supercomputer in my pocket made life a lot easier and again let us progress I think a lot more than yeah. we would have otherwise. And I think I'm more excited about long range too oh, because 100%. I didn't have to do all the math and I'm excited to learn the math Right. but I don't I was less excited to learn the math in long range one but I'm more excited to learn it now. And I think we'll be in a better mindset to mm -hmm. learn it at that point because we're having to chew on less at, a, mm -hmm. at any given time but anyway. Um, 
We've already gone way past my goal for how short this video is going to be. This, you guys know I don't make short videos. Um, but, so again, McCluskey Arms Company mm -hmm. hosted the class. Um, you guys are hosting the Task Collective a lot this summer if you're yeah. watching this video when it goes up. Uh, but probably going to be hosting classes and teaching classes for the near future. So if people want to know or stay on top of what classes are coming up, or want to know about you know details on it or round counts or prices, where is a good place for them to look? So you can get to us on Instagram, it's McCluskey Arms Co. and training at McCluskey Arms for email address if you want to get a hold of us. Cool, and I'll, I'll have both of those in the description. And if they do have, because you've got a website, mm -hmm. if they do add a training page to the website, I'll just put that in the pinned comment. So just check the pinned comment for any updates or anything like that. Um, I think it's really cool having an opportunity in kind of the Eugene area to have good quality classes. Now the long range classes are more central Oregon just because it's a much better location for that. Um, but you guys are doing medical classes, handgun classes, rifle classes, uh, handgun and rifle classes. Uh, you guys are doing like force on force stuff. You guys are doing a lot trying to cover a lot of the game which has been something sort of lacking in this immediate area in my yeah. perception. So I'm super happy to have that. And um, I'm, I'm glad Eric has been able to be in a video with me because I've referenced him a ton. Whenever I <laughs> say my gunsmith did this, my gunsmith did that, this is the gunsmith that does that. So on top of training, if you guys are looking to have pretty much anything done, you guys do custom AK builds, you guys, you know, pin and weld, threading, all that, you know, general stuff, but also a lot of really cool specialized stuff as well. Um, so check check out their website for that kind of information. Also, mm -hmm. he does really good work. I've trusted him with my own money. Uh, he's I'm I'm not being paid to promote his company. I'm you know paying for the classes. So for what that's worth. Um, uh, but again, I'm just super appreciative of what you guys are yeah. getting going on, and I want to help spread the word as much as possible. I guarantee this video is not going to perform well because no one actually cares about training because yeah. they want to look cool on Instagram, but they don't care about actually progressing their skills. So to the core of you that are watching this video, uh, definitely share this with those people who refuse to take training because they definitely need to know about it. But anything else you want to say to close things out here? So I'm really excited about training. Um, for me, I don't get a lot of time to go train, and that's always been my biggest excuse. So for... Um, the 300,000 or so people around this area, um, we're trying to bring training in so that you don't have to spend two to four hours of your day that you get to go training a month or something like that, driving to, to and from somewhere. Um, we're trying to bring in the basics right now. We're going to get our, uh, kind of a groove going and we'll try and bring in more instructors, more, um, different classes. Uh, we're going to try and cover everything. And our main goal is to bring training in. So if you're into training, let us know. Mm -hmm. If you have specific classes you want to see, let us know. And uh, we will do our best to bring that in. Yeah. And especially the intro classes, really reasonable pricing, mm -hmm. really reasonable round counts. I know ammo is kind of the, the issue for a lot of people right now, but they're keeping it as manageable as they can possibly be. Mm -hmm. um, so, again, there's, there's really no excuse to not do it. Um, so... Once you take a class, you're going to get the training bug and you're not going to want to stop. And again, I'm appreciative that there's something in the local area to help facilitate that. So, yeah. Eric, thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Any other closing statements you want to add? Uh, the best thing about the shooting world is the people. So go out there and train with the people yeah. and enjoy it. Yeah. And yeah. The, the, the group of people at, the, at this class, we had eight shooters, um, really great group of people. And... Uh, that's just something I've seen with pretty much every class. Is mm -hmm. You meet awesome people. So, yeah, man. all right. Well, cool. Again, check out the description. Check out the pinned comment down below for any updates as far as that stuff goes. But as always, I hope you got something out of this video, and I really appreciate you watching. Go ahead and align. I'll just call it out and let you do all the spotting on your own. Okay. Or shots and impacts, spots and everything on your own. Okay. Uh, 400. 400. I mean, it's not easy like mine. It's, just, it's not 999. Well, now that I've had so many.
Seven? Seven. real quick that inches doesn't matter past 100 anymore. Yeah. yeah. It, like it literally doesn't matter. Yeah. So if it doesn't matter, then you don't have to do all those equations. Alright. I'm gonna see if I'm gonna break your first round impact streak. Go to a thousand. I will say this bag makes a huge difference. Uh, yeah, like I said, it's so big time. All right, I'm on. Oh. Great on elevation. It was just off. Of on how it lines up with just that 150 wheel. Yeah. Like you got a really good setup going right there. Well, and I I knew my what my elevation should be from confirming dope yesterday. I knew that it should be about 10 and a half mils. And I know 800 is where the 150 starts to go out the window. Um, what's that? Oh, letting you get in on this too. Especially also running MOA and 308 which is different than obviously 6.5 Greedmore and Mills. Yeah. Um, I'll try and stay away from my personal opinions on the <laughs> I'll reference, I'll put a link in the description <laughs> of your, your hate video. 